Good morning, good morning. Thanking God for this day, September the 21st, 2017. Thanking God how he allowed us to see another day, another beautiful sunny day on today. Thanking God how he watched over us all night long as we slumbered and slept in the image of death. No hurt, harm, or danger came upon us. And we thank God because truly God is awesome on today. God is great. God is mighty on today. I don't know what you woke up to this morning, but I hope you woke up with a, a smile on your face, giving God thanks and praises for another beautiful day. <clears throat> this morning, I want to um, talk to you this morning about prayer and a believer's life. Uh, truly, we live in, in a praying time. As we watch the news and we see all that's going on on the news, we can look in our community and see all that's going on in the world and in our communities and our families. And truly, we know that it's a pressing time. And truly, we know that we are living in the last and the evil day. And the Bible declared that he shortened the time for the very elect because the enemy is on a rampage. He is going to and fro. He is on his job. But we thank God for Jesus on this morning. And we know that through Jesus, we got the victory. And we know that through Jesus, we are more than conquerors. And we are possessive, possessors of the kingdom on this morning. I, I want to talk to you today about prayer. Truly, if you're going to make it in this life, if you're going to sustain in, in this life, you as a believer, you're going to need a prayer life. Prayer is the key in every believer's life. I myself personally feel that prayer should be your first language and English should be your second, especially in the time that we are living in on today. Um, if you are having trouble in your home, trouble on your job, trouble in the schoolhouse, trouble in the White House, saints, we got to pray. The church got to come together more than ever before and begin to trust and believe God for what he is and for who he is on this morning. And um, I got a couple of scriptures that I want to I want to read to you. And the first one is um, in Ephesians 6 and 18. And all these scriptures is talking about prayer. 6 and 18 says, pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Thessalonians 5 and 17 says that we should pray without ceasing. Philippians 4 and 6 say, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Oh, I can relate to this right here. And when it says, do not be anxious for anything, because y'all know we, we live, we are, we are in the flesh. And sometimes things can be going on around you and you trying to control it, but you have to realize that you can't control the situation and you got to give it to God. You got to pray, you got to give it to God. And I'm telling you, if you don't pray and you don't give it to God and begin to praise God and ask him to help you help lift you above that situation that's going on in your in your house, on your job, in the church house, you got the you 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 won't make it on today. You will not make it. The Bible say man heart will fail them because of fear, because of being so over anxious and not trusting and believing the God that you serve. I'm telling you, if you if you say you a Christian, nine times, nine days we living in, you gonna have to stand up and be who you say you are. There's time is time out for trying to be in the street and time trying to hang in the church because it's not gonna work. I'm telling you, the enemy will devour you. I say it, he will. If you out there and you you play, you in God church and you playing with God and you in the screen, you know you in the screen and you playing with God, I'm telling you the enemy will devour you. Uh, then let's go on to Mark 11 and 24. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have it and it is yours. Mm. This is something that I struggle with myself. 
when you pray to God, first you got to pray to him in the spirit. And when you pray to him in the spirit, you got to believe that God is going to do it for you. That's why we pray every day. I pray, God, help my unbelief in you. Because, yes, yeah, sometimes I know I'm, I'm, playing, I'm crying holy, holy, and I'm saved. But I struggle with this on today. And it says, believe that it is yours. Y'all, we got to believe God. We got to begin to trust God and trust his word. And if you go to God and you pray to him about a situation, you leave it there with him. I know we in the flesh, but you got to begin to let your spirit man begin to take over and begin to take control of your life, of your, of your whole being. When you begin to pray and you begin to talk to God, you begin to draw closer to him and closer to him. Now, how can I put this? When I said, whenever you pray, you got to believe God. Now, when you pray and, and you now and you saying you believe God for what you asking Him for, that it might not come today or tomorrow or the next year, because we got to know that the time we in is not the time that God is in. We know that God is not moved by our emotions. God moves by our faith in Him. You got to believe God and know. That God is going to do it for you. When it look like it ain't going like how it should. You still got to have that faith to and believe God. We got to begin to do what? We got to begin to speak things that are not as though they were. We got to begin to look at things in the spirit realm. I know for myself as for dealing with um, issues that's in my own household. I have... Uh, two, one son that have confessed to Christ, another son that has confessed to Christ, but it seems that he's kind of drawing away from God. But I know that God is married to the backslider, and I have one son that has not been saved, has never confessed to Christ as his, as his savior, and he got into some trouble. I think it was back in 20, 2015, 26, 2016. I think it was in 2016. And I'm telling you, God, y'all, that thing has been a burden on me. But as time began to move on, and when you can just see how the enemy is using an individual, how the enemy is trying to take control of your children, and you, and as a mother, it, it that thing hurts you. Because you yourself know that you have been not been saved all of your life and you yourself know that God had brought you in from where you at and you looking at the situation you wonder God when when is it going to happen when is he going to confess Christ as his savior uh how how much more do he have to go through before he know that he needs God and even when it look like it ain't going right. Even when your child appearance, continence, everything is changing before your eyes. You still got to believe and you got to trust God. You got to keep praying and keep keep that thing before God. Just keep asking him. Not that you don't believe him. But he said you have not because you ask not. And you just begin to keep praying. Keep praying for that individual. Keep praying for your child. Keep praying for that situation that's on your job. Keep praying for your companion. And, and I am guarantee you that you will see a change. And that change will first begin to happen in you. Because the more you pray, the more closer you draw unto God. And you and you begin to realize that you can't control that situation. And that it's all in whose hand? It's all in God's hand. So you got to give it to God on today. And um, another scripture that I want to talk to you about. It says, likewise, the Spirit helps you in your weakness. Oh my God. It said, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we know not what to pray for. But the Spirit 
It intercedes for us with a groaning and a mourning of intercession. It, we thank God for that. Because a lot of times in our weakness, we, we know that we are weak, but God is strong. We know that God is mighty in battle. And I'm telling you, if you want to battle with your enemy, it's going to be through prayer. Oh, it ain't going to be through you running your mouth. Oh, no. No, no, no. You ain't going to make it like that. But it's on your knees. It's in your car. It's in your household. It's wherever you at praying unto God and giving every situation in your life unto God. Because you know that God is the only one that's going to bring you through. Many times we try to do it our way. But we know that our way is not God's way. And what we got to do, we got to go all the way back around and, and, and go back around through it again. It's just like the children coming out of Egypt. That God promised them a land flowing with milk and honey. And it, and it took them 40 years. Oh my God. 40 years to get to that land flowing with milk and honey. God, I don't want that to be me. God, help me, God. Help me on my journey on today. God, help me on my way. God, I need you to help me. But back to talking about prayer. If you're going to make it in this life, it's going to have to be through prayer. As a believer, you're going to, you're going to need, you need a prayer life. Uh, a lot of times you hear somebody say, we're talking about prayer warriors. Oh, Lord, my phone going dead. 